today, uh, basically, I just wanted to talk to you guys about um, what you're up against when it comes to blog security um, and just kind of give you a few examples of the things that are going on out there in the world and what, what can be happening to your site or sites that you manage. Um, and my whole world kind of became, I, I, I kind of just became very aware of this whole thing within the last year because um, I work at Oxide, we're a design company and we do th websites for people. So, and we kept, it's just every once in a while one would get hit by something and they'd, they'd like something weird is going on with our website and then come to find out it had been hacked. And why? I don't know. So now you, know, you have to investigate what happened, where's all the junk at? And um, some more serious than others, but uh, and a lot of times it's in many different ways. But um, there's basically um, when somebody says their site is hacked, they don't really necessarily know what they've said um, because there's a lot of different ways a site can be hacked. Um, the one very most basic way I can describe to you is that somebody comes to your login page. So if you're familiar with um, WordPress, uh, you'll have a web address. Right, our website is oxidesign.com, and then it's wp-admin. When you go to that, I'm logged in, so it's going to show me. But when you come to that page, you get some form of the WordPress uh, login screen, which is, and this we have branded for ours, but it says, you know, WordPress at the top, and it says username, password, login. Very basic. Um, the first entry point for anybody who's trying to gain access to your site is here. Um, there are what they call bots. It's just little automated programs that go out to any website, and they'll find your URL, and then the next thing they'll do is they'll look for the existence of wp-admin slash. That's what they look for. They find it, awesome. They're, that's their first step. Now the bot knows that it's a WordPress site. It's a very telling tale to that bot. Um, we'll probably get to this later, but there are plugins you can use to move it. Yes, and that's not perfect either. Like, you know, bots know. Um, there's a couple other ways that a bot can find out that you're running a WordPress site. Uh, the existence of a uh, license.txt file in the root of your site, which is completely accessible to anything. Uh, all they have to do is go to oxidesign.com, look for license.txt, and if the license.txt file contains anything about WordPress, they got you, and they know what version number you're running to. Um, there's a metadata tag that WordPress applies to every page of your site that says generated by WordPress. That's a really telling tale to a bot, too. Now, those things uh, on, at, at first hand aren't bad things to have on your site, but that's just things that malicious people will use to find things out about your site. Um, so the first thing a bot will do once it knows, it'll come here and it'll say, all right, well, most times somebody sets up their WordPress site and they're only really thinking about it and they just leave it as admin. So the admin user is admin. So we know that much, right? Um, and then we have a list of the most popular passwords in the world. Start with those. It just keeps hitting your site with password after password after password. It's not even viewing this page. It's just using the form fields available to it, and it's sending the request to the server. It's just going and going and going. Um, on WordPress, there's no brute force protection. This is called a brute force attack. Um, there's no protection in WordPress at the login level like this against this thing. So it could do this thousands of times a minute until it hits. And when it hits, it's in. And then you can pretty much kiss everything goodbye. Or it could be sneaky, and it could try to put something into a post, um, like weird malicious code that gives strange search results that'll help boost some other person's website, all kinds of weird little things. Or they could just be you know, somebody that's being kind of shitty and wants to delete a bunch of stuff. Who knows? Half the time, a human being doesn't even know that your site has been hacked. Uh, most of the time, it's just a completely automated system that's going through, trying to find a way in, and trying to insert malicious code. Um, and like I said, the malicious code, usually in most cases, is a way for uh, unscrupulous people to get higher SEO rankings 
on other websites. It's basically it. Um, so one day you might be Googling along and like, I'm just going to Google my own website, see how it looks. And you'll notice that it says your, your site's name, and then it says a bunch of things about pharmaceutical stuff. You know, why? Why? I have nothing to do with pharmaceutical stuff. Well, because they wanted to be found, so they're found instead of you. Um, and that's usually what happens there, that, and that pretty much sums up brute force attacks. Um, if you're running a WordPress site, uh, it is 100% likely that this has been attempted at least once on your site. Um, it's pretty likely that it's happening to your site right now. Uh, <laughs> since there's no protection against it. Uh, if, especially if your site is popular, they take that into account. They, you're easier to find, you're easier to find by these guys. Um, that is called a brute force attack. It's basically all there is about it. Um, there's a one good way to protect against this sort of thing, and it's a WordPress plugin that I found called WordFence. What WordFence does is it it actually adds brute force attack protection to your login. Um, it watches your login. It keeps track of. Um, this is it running on Oxide's site. Um, you can see here, I logged in today. It says, this person, me, logged in successfully as my username. That's a good thing. Um, it also shows me as having logged out. When I logged out and logged back in to show you the, the, uh, to show you the login page, it's actually recording all of that right now. Um, you can see here, as recently as four hours and 20 minutes ago, there were four attempts on our login as admin, all of which failed. This was a brute force attack, and that happened to our website four hours ago. Um, after five failed attempts, this plugin notified me via email, and I was able to go and block their IP address, and it will not be happening again from that person. Um, IP blocking is pretty good in this case. They can always just run through a proxy and go at you again. Um, but the main point here is that um, you know about it and you can stop it. Uh, this plugin will also, after several attempts, will automatically temporarily block um, an IP. Uh, usually to a bot that means, all right, they got me, and they'll move on. Some bots, not so much. Um, it all just depends. But this way you know, and that's a lot better than not knowing. I'm sure some of you today didn't even know this was going on, but it does. Um, I don't want you to get all paranoid or anything. It's not that bad. If you, usually, if, as long as your username is not admin, you're fine. But if anybody out there is running a, a WordPress site with the admin username admin, that's going to be trouble. Um, WordFence. Yeah. It's free. You can, you can download or you can get a premium uh, user, but all of the useful functionalities, totally free. It's great. Um, another thing that somebody might say, like, oh, no, my site got hacked, is if uh, somebody received a whole bunch of comment spam. Comment spam is another form of not really hacking, but it's just something that's super annoying that happens to your site. Um, what will happen is, uh, much in the same way as anything else, a bot will come along and find a comment field and say, hey, here's something. Um, I, could, I could probably get some links in here or something. So same reason. It's all that weird SEO stuff. They call it black hat SEO. It's just a dirty way of getting your site ranked higher. Um, and yet a bunch of SEO people in Omaha charge for it. <laughs> <laughs> Very. Um, so... Uh, what happens is it's just a bot that comes along, try it, gives it a shot, and if, if it works, it works. It'll just submit a comment, and it'll put it on your page, and then it's there. Um, in most cases on WordPress, you're, you turn on moderate comments, and you know, they won't get through immediately. You know, but you'll get a bunch of emails about a bunch of spam comments. That's annoying. Um, fortunately, WordPress already has something for you called Akismet. Um, you're probably all familiar with that. Plugins. 
It's always the first one in the list, or unless you have something that's, whoops. Um, all you have to do is activate it and go through the on-screen prompts to get an API key and insert the API key, and away it goes. What Akismet does is it compares any submitted comment against a giant database of comments um, that they have collected over time. And if the comment um, matches or closely matches something that's already been regarded as spam, it spams it, and you don't ever have to worry about it. If you look here on our comments, we have Akismet running. And uh, I just cleared this out about a week ago. server's having a moment. Um, and it's back up to 1,649 spam comments. So that would have been 1,649 really annoying emails uh, that I did not get. So Akismet works. It works very well. We had, we, I have not seen a spam comment get through on our site running Akismet. There's a problem with Akismet, though. If your site gets very, very popular um, or just for some reason attracts a very power, powerful bot, this number can get up to the hundreds of thousands. That means your server is running all of those, requ all of those requests to the comment form, and it'll slow you, it'll slow you down quite a bit. Um, this was happening to our site. I ended up finding out the IP address through WordFence of the comment bot and blocked it that way. So WordFence does a lot of cool things. It can actually find IP addresses for anybody who's visiting your site, anybody or any bot that's accessing your site, and I was able to block it. This is great because that was a really bad one. Um, and that bloats your database. That makes everything very, very slow. Um, but is not, if you're, if you're doing things against it, it's not the end of the world. Um, a, a new thing that I've found, I haven't found any good plugins that have, have implemented it, but it's called a honeypot. Um, what this does is it adds a field to your comment field, to your comment fields, that's hidden to any human being styled out with CSS. Um, but the bot doesn't know that. And the, the, the bot will see a field and say, hey, here's somewhere I can put a link. It'll put a link in there. And if that field contains anything, then it doesn't even send the request. It's just <laughs> over. We're not, we're not even considering this a comment. So it doesn't even make it out. It doesn't even make it in your database. It doesn't even make it to Akismet. It doesn't even do anything. Done. I haven't found any plugin yet that um, leverages this well. But it's out there. Now, all these, all these things kind of chalk up to basically minor annoyances, really. If, if, it, if a bot gets into your site and gets the admin, um, the likelihood is that nothing really bad is going to happen. They're going to add some links to your site and stuff like that. It's going to put some embarrassing stuff on Google for you, but it's not terribly hard to find, especially with WordFence. Um, that's another thing about WordFence is it has a scanner. It'll go through and scan everything on your site. It'll tell you where everything is. It'll tell you what's wrong, and you can get it out. It's very, very easy. Um, I can, I'll show you more things about WordFence later, but um, those things are just kind of minor annoyances. Now there's one thing, and even, even an admin can't really see um, his own password or other people's passwords through, through Word, the WordPress interface. Um, all you can do is reset passwords, so they're never really going to get a hold of your password um, unless they're really tricky. Uh, at least in, in that way. Now, this way is probably the worst way that your site could get hacked. This is a serious hack, and this person put on YouTube. It, um, it's basically what's using what's called a zero-day vulnerability um, exploit. This one is one that got kind of famous because everybody had uh, Tim Thumb in one way or another in some plugin or some theme file. Um, Let's see if this works. Um, so basically what he does is he goes, and he's got this set up. So he's not actually hacking somebody's site. He's got this set up on a local machine. He's just showing. So here's got a WordPress site. He scrolls down and he sees that. Uh, the name of the theme, Ford Reporter. And he goes, he's got a list of popular themes that are affected by the Tim Thumb hack. And he finds that the Ford Reporter theme is right there in the list. And the list shows him right where the script can be found. 
So what he does, this is just a somebody, a nice, a hacker. <laughs> So he goes, and what he knows about WordPress is that everything's under WP content themes. He knows that Ford Reporter is Ford Reporter, camel case, slash scripts, slash thumb.php. There it is. So what that is, Tim Thumb is just a piece of um, software that allows you to upload any image, um, and it'll output thumbnails for you. It's kind of handy. It's nice to have. Um, themes will use it uh, to, you know, as you upload images, it'll use it to break them down to the correct sizes, and then display them on your web page. That way you don't have to think about using Photoshop or anything like that. You can just upload, upload images. It's super handy. Uh, the problem is, is that the theme developer wasn't really thinking when he was writing um, the code. And he put in a whole bunch of allowances for URLs in this. Um, instead of just allowing the local URL to access it, he also allowed things like Flickr.com and stuff like that, which on the surface is pretty handy, right? But he didn't put specifically Flickr.com, like HTTP colon slash slash Flickr.com. He just put in Flickr.com. So it wasn't protecting anything. Um, somebody could come along. I could put a, a page on my site called, or a subdirectory on my site called Flickr.com.DrewGorley.com and it would have allowed an upload of any image from my personal website onto somebody else's website. Um, basically, what he's doing right now is he's just downloaded an image of the moon, and what he's doing is he's taking um, an attack shell, which is a piece of PHP coding that allows him to see everything about his server. Um, he's just attaching it to the back end of that moon file, of the image. Um, so he's just going through his little programs here and sticking it onto the back of it. Um, and basically what he'll do is he will upload this file to the server. And he's just kind of working through it right now, making sure everything's fine. Um, he'll upload it to the server. And then he'll access that image in such a way that allows him to see into the file um, and basically run the PHP script as though it were just a page on this person's website. And you can see here he's working on it right now. So you see here, and he's showing right now that just the header of the file shows that it's a GIF. It's just an image file, except that at the back of the file, it's got the base64 encoded version of his attack script. Which basically just means the computer's not going to know the difference. See right here, he says, fakeflicker.com, Tim Thumb. And uh, there you go. He's now successfully uploaded a file from his server, from his own personal server, to somebody else's complete stranger's website. The browser just thinks it's the picture of the moon, which is what he just showed. So all he has to find is the point where the file splits, the point where the file is not the moon, but is what he's looking for, which is the attack script. And all he has to do this will spit a number back out at him. And all he has to do is copy and paste that into the browser. And that's it. So now he's going to that file, but he's viewing it as a PHP file. And here it is. Just a little bit of garbled text to get by, and he's got everything about your server. He can run SQL queries, which is basically everything WordPress does. Um, he can show all the databases, which is what he's going to do right now. Uh, he can see here that the WordPress database is alive and well inside of this database. He's telling it to use it and then to show all the tables inside the database. Oh, there it is. 
And anybody who's familiar with the back end of WordPress will notice every single one of those tables. The most telling of which, select all from WordPress users. Oh, look, there's your admin user. Oh, and there's your password. You got it. Uh, not only can this do that, but this attack shell can also go in and edit any files. All he has to do is go in and look there. There's the index.php, the very, very lowest level file of your theme. He's going in here, and this probably looks familiar to anybody who's developed a theme. He's just going to change out the title of all of your blog posts to something kind of snotty. So now what he's going to do is he's got, your, he's got your admin user. He's got everything he wants. He's got everything he needs to know about your database. All he's going to do here is just delete his file out of your server so you never really knew he was over there. Now the file's gone. No evidence. And he'll go in and he'll show you that now, now the theme, instead of any title, just reads mission accomplished on every single title of your posts. Um, so that's something a hacker can do if they find an exploit. Now, the only way that you can really protect yourself against a zero-day attack is by keeping everything really updated. Um, this Tim Thumb thing took everybody by surprise. Um, and as you might suspect, the hackers that find them, the reason they're called a zero day attack is because there's been zero days for the developer to respond to the exploit. Um, that basically means the developer doesn't know it exists. And no hacker is ever going to tell a developer, hey, I found this in your code. Um, the only way to ever protect against this is just to be as updated as possible. And even then, it might happen. So um, I installed an attack shell on Oxide's site, just to show you. Um, I actually hid it behind a WordPress user, so not everybody can see it. But if this existed on our server as it is and wasn't protected by a login, any stranger could come to oxidedesign.com slash test.php and look at the entire file structure of our entire server, um, all the permissions. Uh, the person could do just exactly what that person did. Um, basically, all you have to do is go in and look at... And this, uh, this shell is even nice enough to... Um, boldface the config file. Um, all you have to do is look in there, look at all the necessary database hookup information, run over to this link right here, SQL, hook up the database and run those SQL queries just like he was running. Look at all the users, all their passwords, um, all that good stuff. And then change anything about any files that they want to. Um, WordFence also protects against this. Uh, I just installed this today and ran a scan. Um, WordFence found it. Well, I must have told it that it wasn't an issue, but, but basically what it would do is it would come up with this big red X and tell you these are just little things, but um, it comes up and it'll tell you this file looks like an attack shell which it is, and you can basically right from this screen say, delete it, and it will be deleted. Um, and then you know that you've been hacked, definitely. Um, you'd be surprised how many of these I've found on sites that we run, and it just happens. Um, there's a lot of different ways for this to happen, too, um, but the one that I just showed you is the most common. It's really, really uncommon for someone to brute force your FTP login, which as it can happen. Um, this, the attack shell that I just showed you that I actually installed has a tool that has a brute force FTP bot. It just has a tool. You can tell it, go, have at it. Try this username and go. Um, so they're really nasty pieces of, of programming you don't want to have on your site. But WordFence, uh, WordFence does find them and um, allows you to delete them. 
So this is like a like a first defense kind of thing, and it's really really handy to have. Um, and I'm sure there's others out there, but um, hopefully you will never have to deal with this. But just so you know what you're up against, um, it's pretty. It's a nasty world out there on the internet. It's fun, but it's not. <laughs> it's nasty. Um, there's a couple other things. Um, That'll protect against some of the lower level stuff like bad behavior, um, which was mentioned before, and things like that that you can just install and run on your site, which will help, um, and it's good to have. But if you're running a site that gains any traction and you'll become a target, just know that. Um, I guess that's basically that's basically all I kind of have to show you. I just don't want I don't want everybody to get all like scared or anything, but this kind of stuff does go on. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry, it was like, did you say WordPress? Yes. Is there a cost to it? Uh, you, can, you can pay, but all of the useful features are all free. It's got like a, a premium user, what, free. yeah, but it's... How much it is, do you know? Um, I, offhand, I'm not quite sure, but I want to say like $100 a year. It's a lot like um, the same cost model as Gravity Forms, which we talked about last time. Um, but... Uh, the, uh, there's really nothing that you'll need that is part of the paid part of this. It's all free and it's, it works great. Um, like everything I've shown you is free. I have a question here. Yeah. I have not invested anything in WordPress yet. I'm looking at it as a possibility. Is it inherently leaky? I mean, it's no, it's not. In fact, uh, the only thing that makes it leaky is plugins. Um, WordPress does an extremely good job of keeping up with um, all kinds of different, you know, attacks. They have a security team that's looking, pouring over everything all the time. So, no, WordPress is very, very clean. It's, it's one of the most clean open source pieces of software. But it is also the most popular open source piece of software. So people find things. Um, fortunately, the, a lot of the people who are finding things are reporting them to WordPress. They're the good guys. Um, but the only the only problem is is if there's a if there's a plugin out there um, or a theme that somebody kind of got lazy on and tried to program around something WordPress um, they thought WordPress couldn't do, um, then there is the case that things like this could happen. And all they have to do is get that file somewhere in your server. And then it'll tell them everything they want. Um, the Tim Thumb hack is a case of somebody that was just kind of being lazy um, and not using um, a functionality that was already in WordPress the entire time, um, which is WordPress's image handling functions, and was just trying to use the quick way, something that they found on Google, and then they stuck it into a plugin, and it got really popular, and everybody started using it. Nobody realized that WordPress already has all those image handling functions already there. You just have to learn how to do it the WordPress way. Um, so, go ahead. Speaking of themes, are there uh, groups of, are there theme um, makers who are worse than others? Is there some place that we can access? There's, there's only one place where you can be sure that a theme has been checked over and good, and that is through WordPress.org. That, um, otherwise, you you don't know. Um, so if you buy a theme that, a link from those WordPress, those are all free. Oh, no, I'm, oh okay, no, I'm talking about paid themes. Oh, um, no, even those um, Woo themes. You, you're familiar with Woo yeah, themes? Uh, the Tim Thumb hack. Every single one of them. Yeah, we're talking about millions of sites that got hacked over the course of like the year and a half that this was going on. It was crazy. <laughs> That's that's engine, engine that's just yeah. That many more that's code that's not being checked. Code right. that's just sitting there. And, and so the ones that you get through WordPress.org, um, in order to get a theme onto their repository, it has to show zero errors. It ha and like it has to show nothing. Like it just has to be good. And so, it's not saying that it's perfect, it sure but it's the. Be pretty to be on there. Yeah. Well, that's true. That's very true. <laughs> Um, but 
but that's the only one that's being policed, and it's being policed by Word, WordPress, so know who you can trust. There is, yes, if you want to start doing theme development or plugin development or things like that, um, especially if you're basing it off of existing things, there's a lot of forward research you have to do um, to figure out, because like, yeah, one day you know, I decided to update my theme, and now all the stuff that I did is gone. If you don't know that was going to happen, that could be really frustrating. Well, the other thing is if you're a developer and working on, on sites for clients, if you don't make a child theme and your client has full admin access, they're more than likely at some point going to go update their theme because they're going to see the thing that says it needs an update. They're well, going to go click on it and they're going to wreck it for you. If you're making websites for clients and you're modifying other people's themes, you probably shouldn't be making websites for clients. You should, you should probably be working <laughs> on child themes and kind of doing things the right way. Right. Anything that you're doing you know, with WordPress functionality, you ought to be doing the WordPress way. Yeah, because if you modify the theme, then they don't have the ability to go in there and actually make changes themselves, which kind of takes the whole purpose of having a good CMS out of the equation. Exactly. Which well, makes it you don't have parts of it. You don't necessarily have to give your clients full admin access. You can give them access <laughs> to the things they need, and that's <laughs> a much better plan. It is it. not, yeah. It's, it, it, that is, yes, you don't want to be giving them, like, maximum admin. But they, they hired you for a reason. Right. Right. Yeah. And more than likely, it's Sometimes they'll request it. They're going to be able to deal with anybody on a lot of the things. The other thing that'll happen is that if they need to, if they decide they need some other functionality, you want to put it as a plugin, they've got to talk to you about it, so you can at least get a chance to talk to them about, you know, plugins that you're familiar with that do what they want, that you're pretty, you know, comfortable with the security on those things and that kind of thing, rather than them just putting in ten different ones and trying them all and, you know, this and that, whatever, and you know, getting things broken. It's like that Tim Thumb hack he was talking about earlier that showed a list of the uh, themes that were. Hackable. Yeah. Well, if you're using a child theme and someone looks at your source code, I mean, they probably still find out eventually. What you're they will. Doing, but, but you know, it'll say hopefully the child theme name there, and hopefully you've also gotten rid of the version of WordPress. All right. Well, yeah. If there's if there's a human that's actually actively looking, that that'll be enough to throw them. But like I've said, they've programmed yeah. pieces of yeah. And that's true. It's the bots that are doing it because you know even though there's many people that are hacking. Um, you know, there's way too many WordPress sites for them to, you know, have a live person looking yeah. at so Well, let's just say that if, if you've actually attracted a human being to hack your site instead of a bot, you're, you're going to you're gonna lose. Um, but, some yes, yeah, some kind of brute force protection. That's the easiest way for them to get in. Or, if you don't want to go that far, just change your username from admin to something else. I have seen, I have seen in one case, and I've seen... Thousands of brute force attacks since I started using this. I have seen in one case it actually use a username that was like not admin that was actually in that site. So somehow it caught it, found it somehow. Um, and I, in my head, I'm not sure exactly how, but in my head, I think um, that user had specifically not changed their display name in their in their user. Um, so. I know. So what, what it was doing is actually in plain text showing the username as the person who had written the posts. Um, so that must be how. But so change that. <laughs> oh, I can show you how to change all that all that fancy stuff in the users. If if you have access to your server. True. Um, you know, another thing you can do is if you if you basically you're doing all your business in the U.S. and Canada, start trying to, to like. Mass block China. And, yeah. and, uh, it's not always the best China, practice, but it's very true. Russia and China. Uh -huh. yeah, if you can block, you know, the mass block those IP addresses. You'll knock off the yeah, you'll be seventy-five, eighty percent of the other attacks. Although one of the worst ones that I've ever seen on our website came from Florida. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to catch them all. But yeah, it's a good start. Um, I thought you were going to say uh, about. You know, being able to change. Sometimes you won't even be able to have access to your users if somebody else is managing your site. And uh, if a site is using admin as the admin user and you didn't even know it, well, then it's not your fault at all, um, which can happen. Sometimes, sometimes shops will set up sites and leave it as admin, and that's not great. Um, so here we've got all the users. 
I'll just edit myself. Right here it says display name publicly as. It may not be very clear on screen. But um, by default, it is your username. It's the top one on the list. Um, change that. <laughs> so I'm now. I which page it on, but when you were talking about comment spam in the back, besides Akismet, um, and I have another one called Bad Behavior, which yeah, is that's, really good too. Yeah. But um, the. Uh, if you just make that setting where the first comment that anyone makes has to go through a moderator, yeah. I, I've never had spam get through those three layers. Right, yes, yeah. And that's that's good, yeah. You definitely want to have to moderate comments or else. So to get spam through in that, they'd have to get through Akismet, bad behavior. And a human and being. fake you, mm -hmm. and then after that, they can spam. Right, right. Yeah. And the only thing about Akismet is that it's free for nonprofit and whatever, but not free for commercial, right? Uh, I think they might ask you to give money if your site's kind of big. I pay that. Go look at their terms of use. It's well, not free for commercial. Yeah, I well. A, I, had a <laughs> I had a political boss for years and I never paid, but I started paying last year just because I. Yeah, I, I, I think what that what that is is that's um, that's Matt Mullenweg's investors getting up his ass about trying to make money. Um, he doesn't care. <laughs> All right. So, and in some places, some clients that you're working with, you need to be aware of that. Yeah. You're not going to be okay if the license says you have to pay and you're not paying. Um, I, one, the, one of the alternates that I've used is a thing called Cookies for Comments, mm. and, it, and it does a pretty good job. Um, it's totally free, even for commercial use. And uh, I imagine it uses some kind of a. I imagine it uses some kind of a cookie to. Yeah, uh, and, and it does a deal where you can't, you know, do more than so many in such right. a period of time, and you know, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, so, which is great too, because it, it works pretty well. There's a lot of yeah, there's a lot of really good solutions out there because this problem has been existing for a long time. Obviously, people are going to find ways to fix it. Um, the most the most interesting way to to fight combat or to combat the spam though is, is the honeypot method. But for some reason, I I cannot find. I've been implementing that on all my regular, you know, PHP built sites, not WordPress, but you know, yeah. just regular sites for probably three years. Yeah. And it's way more effective than captures. I know. And I, I mean, <laughs> what is? It just works. The, the honeypot honey method. Oh. Uh, honey I've been. I'm writing a plugin to use the honeypot method right now because I'm really annoyed with the amount of spam that I have to delete out of our database. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll come out with that eventually. No promises, but. <laughs> Any other questions? <coughs> That's all I got. I hope you're not too scared. <laughs> we'll just call you if something happens. Uh -huh. Fix it. I'm I'm good at doing it. I've done it enough. Thank you for listening. <laughs>